everybody, what's going on? Rob here from Hammered Halo, and I just want to welcome you all to my next project. Okay, take it easy. It's not the whole building, but it is one unit in the building. In this video, we're going to be renovating a one-bedroom condo. So make sure you stick around to the end because we're going to go over the costs, how much it costs for the labor, the material, and how long it took to do this job. So we're starting off this renovation with the demolition and here we're removing the cabinets. These are old oak cabinets dated back to the 80s. So once we got all the cabinets out, we focused on the carpet and the lino in the kitchen and bathroom. And then the tile around the tub. This was a pretty dirty job, but I'm not gonna get too much into the demolition of this unit. I've already done a video on it and I'll put a link right at the top here. And here we're just cleaning up the last little bit of debris so we have a fresh canvas to start this renovation on. So the first thing we had to do was spray out the ceiling. So here I'm masking off one of the lights that I wasn't able to drop down. This is a concrete building, so this light was anchored in pretty good, so we went ahead and masked it. And before we could paint, we had some repairs in the ceiling to take care of. Here I'm spraying spray text back up and blending it in with the old, and you'll see how it blends in nicely with the hopper. You can rent these hoppers at any of uh, the big box stores. So here I'm on to spraying out the ceiling. I'm using a flat ceiling white paint with an airless sprayer to apply it. And this ceiling was pretty dirty and it seemed to soak up the paint a lot, which required us to put on two coats, which worked out to about 10 gallons of paint. Boy, I haven't done that in a while. Oh. So the next step was to prime out all the walls. And here I'm just rolling out the walls. I'm not cutting in the ceiling. And we went ahead and tinted the primer to match as closely as we could to the final wall color. And I do this just to help uh, with the coverage when you're on your final coat. Another reason to prime out at this stage is it helps you see any imperfections in the walls that need to be repaired or patched. And this process took roughly two hours to complete just to roll out all the walls and uh, it also helps keep the dust down a little bit. So after the primer is dry, you can go ahead and patch out all the walls. And here I'm using a six inch putty knife and a 12 inch trowel to hit some of the larger areas. And the idea is just to go around and find any imperfections in the wall and touch them up, whether it's nail holes or screw pops or anything like that. Once this stage is over, we jump into installing our doors and casings. So we use what we call a knockdown door package and it consists of two leg jams, a header jam, the door and three hinges. And it's up to us to put the, the jams together and install them in their openings. And here I'm just uh, putting all the jams into the proper openings. Now 
Now we're using a quarter inch vinyl laminate floor. So I'm gonna use that as basically a shim underneath the jam of the door. That will allow the gap to be the proper gap at the bottom of the door. And obviously get your jam level using shims. Once everything's set, you can screw it into place. Okay, so we went ahead, we installed all the jams, all the doors. Now we're going to do what they call a stop, which is basically this piece that the door slams against. And then case out the doors and call it a day. So when casing out these doors, we like to use quite a bit of glue. I don't like my woodwork coming apart or cracking over time, so we're using as much glue as we need on all the miters and the faces of them, and then a two inch brad nailer to nail it to the jam and the wall. So once all the doors were done and hung, we prepped out all of the windows and ceiling areas that needed to be prepped prior to spraying out all this woodwork. And here I'm just bringing in the doors to be sprayed, propping them up against the wall. And there's only four doors in this condo, so it's fairly easy. And I like to use a cedar shim with a roofing nail in the center of it, pounded into the top center of the door. It allows us to prop the doors off the wall. And there's another purpose for this, which you'll see shortly. And before painting, obviously I must sand all the doors first, especially the edges. So we decided to go with a satin finish for all our woodwork, doors and trim. So here we're just spraying it out with an airless sprayer again. Making sure to get full coverage on all of the woodwork. And once this dries, we'll go ahead and sand everything again and start the process all over again. And here's where you'll see where that shim comes in handy again on top. It makes it really easy to spin the doors around so you can spray out the other side. Well, it's a new day and it looks like a day to do some flooring. So here we're rolling out our under pad for our laminate vinyl flooring. We are using flooring that has a pad already glued onto the back of it, but we are on a concrete substrate, so we are using an additional vapor barrier pad to add a little bit of protection against any moisture. So it's really important that you leave a gap at the wall when starting your flooring and all the way around. This is a floating floor and it has to be able to move around. So that 3 8 gap will help it uh, move around and not buckle over time. So this condo is 650 square feet. We are doing the entire condo. Again, it's a waterproof floor, 100% waterproof. So we're using it in the bathrooms and the kitchens. There's two of us working on this and this took about a day and a half to complete. I'm sure some guys can do it quicker, but uh, we're just working at a good pace that uh, works for us.
So now we're moving into the hallway. It becomes a little more difficult. All the door jams need to be uh, undercut and the wood has to be able to slide underneath the jam so that it flows continuously. Here I'm cutting the vinyl plank to go under the jam and it will slide right in. Here we're removing the toilet which should have been done a long time ago but in this little bathroom it looks like it goes fast but uh, it's a small bathroom and when you're in a tight area like that same with this kitchen it tends to drag out for a little longer than it needs to but nevertheless we got it done and I think it looks pretty good it definitely gives a, a more modern feel to this condo and the the grays tend to be in style right now and it could be a trend but uh, that's what we're going with on this one so now we're going to jump into installing the kitchen and here i'm just laying out some reference lines based off the cabinet sizes that we've ordered I like to draw out the cabinets on the wall so that we get the right boxes going up at the right time. So, first one being a 24 inch microwave cabinet, second one is a 27 inch sink cabinet, and then on the end another 24 inch cabinet. And we'll jump on over to the other side of the kitchen, do the same thing, mark out each box. Do our top reference line, mark out the sizes. So here we're starting to install the cabinets and the first cabinet to go up is a microwave cabinet. Obviously there's a plug that needs to be cut out of the back of that cabinet. So I'm just transferring the marks to the plug on the back of the box and we'll cut that out using a jigsaw. And here I'm just marking the studs in the wall, making sure I have some solid structure to anchor the boxes to. And you don't need a fancy stud finder for this. Uh, you can pick up really inexpensive ones at any, any of the box stores. So here's the first microwave cabinet going up and you can see that the uh, receptacle box is in there. And here we're installing the second box. We like to use these vice grip C-clamps. These are made by Milwaukee and they hold up the cabinets together really nice and solid so that you can get them fastened to the walls. It's always nice to have a second set of hands when, you, when you're installing cabinets. You know, you can do it yourself but it takes a lot longer and a lot more frustration. So here we're onto the other side of the kitchen, same process, first box goes up, second box, third box. And each box gets screwed to the one beside it and we use inch and an eighth, number eight screws to secure them to each other. And now that all the uppers are installed, and screwed together, we can jump down to the lowers. And we'll start on the right side here first. We will mark out our outside lines, mark our studs. And bring the cabinet into position. Make sure it's level all the way around and screw it to the wall. 
Now we'll jump over to the sink side. We've got to remove the P-trap from the drain. And here I've just uh, drilled out the holes for the supply and drain lines on the sink. I always want this to be as clean as possible. It's just, it looks uh, a little more professional when you do it this way. Here I'm putting the microwave shelf in, putting four screws from the underside to keep it solid. And now that all the boxes are in, we're gonna slide the countertops in place. Just put the dishwasher gable up and now we can hang all the doors back on their hinges. Get all the drawers in place. And some final touches on the hinges to adjust the doors to line up properly. And that's about it for the kitchen. So it's fairly easy, basic kitchen. These are not very difficult to do, um, but it's definitely starting to come together now. With the new white cabinets and the gray countertops, I think it looks pretty good so far. So now that all the flooring is in and the cabinets are installed, we can direct our focus to the baseboard. And we're using a four inch flat stock baseboard. And here I'm just gonna measure and cut all the pieces, get them in place around the entire condo. Making sure all the miters are tight. Here, moving into the bedroom. And in some cases, you have to be a little creative. Here, we've uh, just basically took, took a bit out of the end of this base, so it slides in nicely to the casing beside it. Moving all the stuff out of the closet so I can continue into there. And before I can go ahead and glue and nail it all in place, I really need to clean up. The saw is full of uh, sawdust, the bag is full, the floor is covered, so it's a good time to take a break and clean up a bit. So once everything's back to normal again, here we are using, again, two inch brad nails and wood glue to glue all our miters. So the next step in the renovation process, for us anyhow, is to pull sand all of these walls. This takes usually about 30 minutes to do a place this size. And the reason to do this is just to knock off any, you know, old bumps of paint or crap that might be on the wall prior to doing a finished coat. So we go ahead and do all the walls with a pole sander using 150 grit sandpaper. And then jump right into sanding all the patches using a sponge sander. And here you don't want to take all the mud off, you just want to lightly sand the patch making sure that the edges are completely sanded of each patch. And once all of those are completed, I like to go around and spot prime all of those patches before even doing my first of two final coats of paint. It's very important that these 
patches that we're priming right now completely dry before doing a final coat. So at this point, that's why I like to jump into cutting in the ceiling and the corners, getting everything cut with the brush. This will need a second cut as well, but getting one cut on as tight to the ceiling as possible will make the next coat go a whole lot easier. And here, rolling on the first of two final coats. The color we've chosen is called Phantom. And it's, it's kind of gray, grayish taupe color, I guess. And here, after the second final coat, removing all of the masking tape around the woodwork to reveal a nice tight line and now we're going to jump right into the bathroom one of the last parts of this reno to complete and here i'm just installing aqua board or moisture board into the tub area And on the control side, here I'm adding a 1x4 to give the drywall a little bit of bracing. And I'm using 5 8 fire guard on the control side for the drywall just because this is a party wall. It backs onto the hallway and this is a multi-family unit so I have to have a fire aided drywall in this case. And now just a quick mud and tape of all the seams, screw holes. And while that is drying, I will move on to installing the subway tile in the kitchen. So they've chosen to go with a four inch by 12 inch subway tile. We're going to lay this in a, what they call a straight lay pattern where the lines all line up as opposed to a subway tile which would be offset of each other. And here I'm just cutting the small pieces using a uh, Sigma tile cutter. Again, you can rent tile cutters from any of the box stores, so pretty easy to come by. And just finishing up the second side of the backsplash in the kitchen. And there it is, finished up. Now that the mud is dry in the tub area, I can go ahead and start tiling the tubs around. I'm using a laser level to find my center line and stay level on the walls of the tub. I am using a mastic on the tub for the adhesive. I know I'm going to catch some slack for that, for not using thin set, but we've done a lot of these units and they typically turn over and are redone every five to seven years. So this type of mastic works in this case. In most cases, wet areas like tub areas, you would probably want to use an actual thin set. I'll also mention I'm using a, a 1 16th inch spacer on all these tiles, both in the bathtub and the backsplash in the kitchen. And finally, I'm using a poly blend non-sanded grout it's bright white is the color code on it. And just gonna apply it with a sponge float 
put it in all the cracks and sponge it off and clean it all off. Here I'm just cutting out the sink openings in the countertops using the templates that come with the sinks. Measuring it and making sure it's centered on the sink cabinet and then cutting it out again with a jigsaw. Same with the kitchen sink. This is a single stainless steel sink. Same process as the bathroom sink. So after a few more finishing touches, hardware and a good clean, that wraps it up for this renovation. And as I promised in the beginning, let's go over the numbers. So our budget for this project was $20,000. It took us 17 days start to finish. And there was two of us working on it pretty much full time for the full 17 days. So the material cost came in at exactly $11,788. While our labor cost came in at $7,900. For a grand total of $19,688, which kept us under budget by about $300. Thanks for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. It means a whole lot. And if life has hammered your halo, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, God bless. We'll see you all next time.